Hey guys, as some of you have noticed, the Quinn LED Dig Uno and the Quinn LED Dig Quad pre-assembled have been out of stock for a little while now. No worries, they aren't going anywhere, and I've been working, well, basically day and night to get them available for you again. And there is some good news about that, so let's take a quick look at what's going on. So, one of the reasons is that I've been working on upgrades for the Dig Uno and Dig Quad. So, this is still going to be a little bit of a preview video. All the hardware design is done and in various stages of testing or production already, but not available just yet. And I just wanted to let you guys know what is actually going on. Now, there are three reasons, or well, four to be honest. Some bad, but some definitely good. First was Chinese New Year. That means a big production stop in China. We knew this was coming and finished a big batch of boards before it, but those sold out pretty quickly, leaving us empty. Then, as I started saying, I've been working since last November to make updated versions of the pre-assembled boards, adding some really nice new features. A little bit more about that later in this video. And third, well, it's kind of my sense of business. I didn't feel comfortable creating a new batch or keeping the current versions of the Dig Uno and Dig Quad in stock and thus making more while I was pretty close to releasing the updated versions or boards. I'd hate for people to buy one and then suddenly the next week a new and shiny improved version is available. But business-wise, this was a less than ideal decision. But yeah, I'm, I'm still learning on that front, so hey. And then for the third reason, we've been hit with way more production delays than we're used to or even anticipated. In part, it's suppliers being out of stock for certain chips we need, or PCBs suddenly taking one or two weeks longer to produce. Or things like the LAN chip, there is going to be an Ethernet version of my ESP32 board suddenly doubling in price because of all the chip shortages going on. Now, take all those things and combine them, and currently we're looking at a delay of about a month from where I want it to be right now. Sadly, most of those factors are outside of our control, and I and the people I have in China for production are working really hard to get everything available to you again as soon as possible. We're looking at the end of April, uh, but yeah, I'll, I'll keep you guys updated on the Discord for sure. And well, if there's a really much longer delay than anticipated again, there will be another video. Okay, hopefully that explains a little bit why they've been out of stock so long. Because, well, I've been making upgrades and uh, <laughs> upgrades are good. There's one last item I need to address before we take a quick sneak preview look at those improvements. And that is the xgeeks.ca chi uh, China, Canada shop, our local reseller in Canada. We've been selling the boards for a while now through their shop, and all in all, that was going fine. Sadly, about two months ago, there suddenly was no contact anymore. Later, Dr. Z's and I learned from the family of Tollbringer, the shop owner's nickname, that he has fallen ill and was in the hospital. We spoke to them about a week ago, but sadly, Tollbringer isn't off too well right now. And, well, is still in the hospital. They are hoping he will be released soon. Sadly, they don't have the logins to his website and shop system, and he can't do so right now either himself. So, we're still stuck with our hands tied, basically. I'd love to help out our customers who pre-ordered from XGeeks and give them some kind of deal or anything we can do to get them the boards and we'll figure it out later. But sadly, without knowing who ordered and what they ordered, our hands are still tied. Rest assured, Dr. Z's and I are on it. And as soon as there's news, I'll update my page about that with the current status. That will be linked in the description. Right, on to the good part. What the hell have I been working on all that time? And what are these improvements I mentioned? Aren't the boards perfect already? <laughs> Nothing's ever perfect. Well, 
It's a bunch of things that all combine to form a whole that is becoming the ecosystem of Queen LED uh, Dig, as I call it. To start off, for the new pre-assembled boards, we are no longer using an externally bought D1 Mini 32, as you might well know. I've created my own custom ESP32 board, I call it Quinn LED ESP32, with some nice improvements, if I do say so myself, versus the normal boards. Partly, this was also inspired by the horrible batch of D1 Mini 32s we had, at the end of January. Basically, more than 35% of those were broken, but that didn't get immediately identified by the testing procedure we had at that time. So since then, we have found the issue with those Mini 32 boards, and there is a fix available if you're able to solder. But a lot of you guys don't buy pre-assembled boards because you want to solder, and we get that. So we've been replacing a lot of ESP32 boards out of pocket to make sure everyone has a working setup in the end. It's just stupid that the component you buy externally pre-made is the main cause for issues with your board, with the Quinn LED stuff. So no more introducing the Quinn LED ESP32, fully designed by me and produced by me and Allnet China. In a quick overview, this board does some stuff differently than the ESP32 modules you're used to. There will be a dedicated video, but in a nutshell, it uses the newest ESP32 WROOM Revision E modules from Espressif themselves, giving you better Wi-Fi, lower power usage, and better stability. The board also includes a strong 3.3 volt regulator and capacitor circuit for providing much more stable power than the generic boards do. No more brownout notices while flashing or other intensive tasks. There is an auto reset fuse on board to prevent it from blowing up. And there's even uh, a special ESD protection chip on it to try and prevent accidentally frying it with ESD. It has a USB to serial chip to flash it using the built-in USB-C, hello, it's 2021, connector. And maybe the best feature of all it has a very dim power LED. If you want to light up the room of LEDs, we'll do that with actual LEDs, not the power status LEDs of our boards. Why are these things always like giant beacons of light? Anyway, right, I don't want to get into it too much, but one of the main things is that this enables us to offer several different versions of the board a normal board with a board antenna like you're used to, or with an external antenna connector. So you can, ex you know, connect an external antenna using a little pigtail for extended range, better coverage, or like using it in an enclosure. And then last, there is going to be a third variant, which will have an ethernet board on top of my custom ESP32 board, giving you 10 slash 100 Mbit ethernet connectivity right on this ESP32 module. This can be especially useful when 100% data integrity is needed for real-time applications or where Wi-Fi is just overloaded. Right, so that was only just the board that plugs into your Queen LED Dig Uno or Dig Quad. Those Queen LED ESP32 boards will also be sold separately for upgrading your current boards or your own projects. Need a board you can power using USB-C, connect to Ethernet and run a few sensors? This is it. Right, so let's move on to the actual digital LED controller boards. The main changes there is that the ESP8266 option for the Quinn LED Dig Uno pre-assembled, that's a mouthful, is going to go away. With producing the custom ESP32 board in-house and leaving off the temperature sensor of the Dig Uno, which most people weren't using, we can offer the Dig Uno with an ESP32 by default now with only a slight price bump. Next to all the advantages this has because the ESP32 is much more powerful, this also means the board is instantly transformed into a dual channel LED controller. Especially with the new WLED 0.12, this is very quick and easy to configure from the GUI and makes the board even more versatile than it already was. Another new feature, together with the Dig Quad, 
is a major change in the integration of a custom designed DC-DC circuit. The voltage selection jumper is gone and the boards are now fully auto 5V to 24V compatible on the main input power terminals and also on the 5V EXT pins or terminals. If you don't know what those are, don't worry about it for now. Just know that you no longer have to set a power jumper and it all works automatically, whatever voltage LEDs or combination of inputs you're using. You do still need to match the power supply voltage to the voltage of the LEDs you're running. Be mindful of that. But this circuit also enables some extra functionality such as auto switching between main input and 5V EXT for standby power. The DC-DC circuit also makes the onboard level shifters with a dedicated level shifter per channel fed with a stable 5.12V making sure you're not going to have any data connection issues to your addressable LEDs. I recently did a few tests with my prototype boards and using decent thickness cables I was able to run like a 20 meter data cable or 64 feet without any issues. All in all this was a major update to the pre-assembled boards, taking a lot more of the production into our own control on both the new fully customized ESP32 boards and both the DIG Uno and DIG Quad. In the future you'll be able to buy any combination of those. Want a dig quad with a normal board antenna, like it wasn't until now? That's fine. Or want a dig uno with an ethernet connection? Possible too. Or dig uno with an external antenna, or dig quad with an external antenna. Any mix you want, you'll be able to purchase when this all goes live. Now, I'll explain more about this in future videos and articles, but the status right now is that all board designs are done and the testing by me is done. The custom Quinn LED ESP32 board has already gone through a full trial batch and came out great. Oh, hey, people who got one of those Quinn LED ESP32s from the trial batch, let people know down in the comments what you liked about them. So, the Quinn LED ESP32 has now entered general production and will be available soon, both to go with the new dig boards and also as separate purchases to upgrade existing boards or, as I said before, for your own projects. Ethernet is separate, and of that currently a trial batch is being manufactured, so they can hopefully be tested soon, and then I'll make a main production batch of those too. Then the Quinn LED Dig Uno and Quinn LED Dig Quad. Of both, a trial batch has been made, and currently samples have been sent out to testers for full validation. Once that is done in hopefully a week or so, we'll enter general production for those too, and I'm hoping to have decent quantities available for purchasing from me through All Net China, for worldwide customers, and locally in the US through Dr. Z's somewhere at the end of April. So, you'll have to wait a little bit longer, but it's coming, and it's better than ever. Then, something that probably needs to be said, some of you have been wondering during this video, but what about DIY? No worries, I'm not abandoning you one bit. The DIY version will get updated revisions as soon as this is all out and done. Sadly, I won't be able to integrate all features mentioned because of the nature of how they're built, but DIY is still in my heart and I'll make sure there's updated designs you guys can build. And last, because I can already hear a few of you asking, can I use Ethernet on my current Dig Uno or Dig Quad? Yes, yes you can with some limitations. I've made an article about this and have also linked that down in the description. Okay, that was a lot of information condensed into a single video, but a lot of exciting stuff is happening. A personal update will also come soon regarding that. I hope everyone wanting a pre-assembled board to run the excellent WLED firmware or other LED software can wait a little bit longer and I don't think the wait will disappoint you. And well, I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye bye.